What's going on guys? In this video, I am going to show you how I studied my favorite oil painter, Jeremy Mann, and use what I learned from doing that to make my own inspired piece. I am going to show you some of my successes and also some of the things I think I failed at as well, so stick around. First of all, Jeremy Mann is an incredible artist. I definitely recommend you guys go follow him. I'll post his uh, Instagram um, in the video so you can go check that out. But he mostly does um, figurative pieces, but he also does these really big cityscapes as well. He does a lot of like pencil sketches. And from looking through a lot of his work, what I noticed was that um, he does a couple things that are very, very interesting, and that's what kind of draws me to his work specifically. So the first thing I notice is that on most of his figurative paintings, there's a lot of like lost edges and ambient lighting, and that creates this like very mysterious mood. I think the mood is the first thing that draws me. The second thing is his quality of brush strokes, and this is something I was trying to capture in my own study as well. He uses a lot of like thick paint and like chunky brush strokes, and it also seems like the way he paints is like pretty wet on wet, so he can get a lot of those like smeared textures, and I just think it looks so cool. The other thing I noticed as well, especially with the piece that um, I was studying is, even though there's a lot of ambient light going on, which makes the shadows very, very soft, he still uses a lot of contrast in color. So he'll either have a figure, um, like a darker figure in a very bright um, clothing or outfit, or it'll be the other way around where he'll have dark clothing on a very light figure, or if he's doing like a nude figure, the skin will be very light and the background will be very dark so that there's like that pop somewhere in the painting. And what it really does is it like really helps you focus in on the interesting parts of the piece. The other thing that's really cool too is he uses this like very limited color palette. So a lot of his pieces are either very like gray or very purple or very orange. And I'll show you as well in my uh, study kind of how I approach this. But what I really noticed from studying this particular piece is that most of the colors are in the bottom half of the color wheel. So he still pushes like the warm versus cool mentality. But in this case, um, the, the light parts of the piece are more swing more towards green and the shadow parts swing more towards purple so once i figured that out i i use that for every aspect of the piece i was like okay am i either going more towards green or more towards purple on this particular um portion of the piece so that was really fun to to kind of play around with and and push myself a little bit outside my comfort zone because i typically don't do much of a limited color palette um and it's it's pretty difficult to achieve when uh, you're just kind of starting out uh, doing this. So that was a lot of fun. Another thing I really tried to capture with my study was the brushstroke quality. So it gave me a really awesome opportunity to play around with a lot of the digital <laughs> brushes that I have had in my palette for like years and years and years or some of the new ones that I've just got. Um, and uh, that was that was a learning experience as well, because, you know, when you're working professionally, you kind of end up sticking to only a couple brushes that you're very, very comfortable with. And with this, I was I was almost trying to capture stroke for stroke, like, OK, I see a chunky stroke here, or a textured stroke here. What brush in my arsenal do I have? that I think could emulate that as best as possible. So I was doing a lot of, you know, playing around and mixing. I was uh, switching off between using just my regular brushes, the mixer brush and the smudge tool as well. Um, I used a lot of brushes from uh, the Meds Map course, Ahmed El Dori's course, if you guys haven't checked that out. Um, he gives a lot of awesome brushes with that. And also um, using Dave Greco's basic brushes. Uh, so. Yeah, it was really cool to, to play around with a lot of that stuff. By the end of the piece, I figured out about four or five brushes that I thought handled pretty well and also um, fit with kind of the style that Jeremy Mann goes for. Um, obviously, like he's an oil painter and I'm trying to mimic that in a digital space. So there's a couple things you kind of have to do to like really try to capture that. And I think the biggest thing uh, if you're trying to emulate oil paint is that look of the paint mixing into each other. So like, you know, in an oil paint, 
you know, when you're oil painting, you might mix two colors together and when you make a stroke, you might see just like little hints of like both colors as well as the mixed color. So what I what I used for that uh, mostly was either the smudge tool or the mixer brush because the mixer brush really kind of gives that feel of the colors blending into each other. And it's not something um, that I really used much until the past couple years or so. So I might do another video on that, but I definitely recommend playing around with the mixer brush because I think you'll get a lot of really cool results that you wouldn't have respect, uh, you wouldn't have expected just using the normal, you know, brush tool. So what I was mainly trying to focus on with this uh, study was not so much the drawing aspect because there's very little. Um, drawing to this it's it's mostly texture actually most of the drawing is actually just in the face and in the chest and then you see I think her knee is kind of lifted up as well um, but I wasn't so concerned with that I was really just trying to capture that mood and that lighting and the texture quality and all of that kind of stuff because what you'll see I ended up doing is um, in the same file I started working on my own piece using those same exact things I learned. So this was a really, really fun exercise for me. It was extremely challenging, but I definitely recommend you guys try it out because it's a way in which you can kind of get a personal piece out of uh, utilizing reference that's not just, you know, photo reference or something like that. You're, you're using what was already working that another artist experimented with to help your piece um, become successful as well. So again, like the color palette, this was not a color palette I would ever really have used before. This was my first time using something like this. So it was it was a pretty cool experiment. And um, I, th I don't think I entirely nailed like the point of what his piece was going for, but that's okay because I did some things with mine that I was pretty happy with. And then there were some other things that I was kind of frustrated about. So. If I talk about some of the things that frustrated me, the, the first thing was that I, I learned that I need to start taking more time doing the sketching phase and pulling reference up front. I think I was so excited to just like dive into this painting that I didn't really <laughs> find much reference. I was like, oh, I'll just draw a face from my imagination. And that started off okay, but then once it gets into the detail and the little things that make a face feel unique and um you know realistic it's it's very hard to to pull that from your imagination you know unless you're a painting god or something like that so i'm still at a point and you know majority of artists uh obviously benefit from utilizing reference so you'll see more towards the end of the piece as well where i really start changing stuff up that's because i ended up on my other monitor like looking through pinterest and finding some faces that were kind of in the same direction as my figure's face was looking and i i started noticing a lot of things where i was like oh the jaw is kind of weird and oh i can tilt the head this way and the eyes don't look quite right so i definitely recommend if you're going to go into any big painting to just start off with the reference you'll save yourself a lot of headache um at the end of the day i still had really fun time doing this because it was a good opportunity to just like play around and mess around with stuff um but yeah i would have definitely saved myself that headache if i just started off with the reference so in terms of the subject matter um when looking at his painting i saw all these like flowy white things and i think they're feathers i don't know if it was just the fabric of what the figure was wearing and that's what's kind of cool about his pieces is you don't always know what's going on but there's always something to focus on. And in this instance, it was like that solemn expression of the figure. And I think that's maybe where, again, my piece, maybe it's just me being more of a concept artist, but I was, I'm was i always like, oh, I need to have a really cool character. So I was like, okay, I'm thinking of feathers. Maybe it's like this bird woman or something like that. So I started putting feathers on this character and that was kind of like the theme of uh, my piece was just to, more or less showcase a cool character than to showcase a mood. And that's also something I think I would like to practice a little bit more as well is not be so concerned with the design um, and, and express more of the emotion because I'm getting to the point as well where what I'm starting to like out of pieces is more of the emotive stuff 
as opposed to cool character design. You know, I'm always going to be a sucker for cool character design, but if you can have that and express something as well, I think that's what really makes a piece awesome. The other thing I think I kind of failed at with this is um, my piece, even though it's got a lot of these uh, lost edges, it still feels kind of like sharp in comparison to his piece. And I think what happened was the way I lit my figure was it was focusing more on her face, whereas the way he lit his figure was more like the, it was almost like a spotlight from like the chin to the chest. And what that allowed it to do was have more of a soft shadow happening in the um, top region of the face, like more of an ambient shadow. And that I think really helped with that kind of mysterious factor. And again, it made it so that the um, emotion of the figure was more important and more interesting than the design necessarily. I think that, um, you know, hindsight being 2020, that's also something I could have paid more attention to. But again, I kind of just wanted to dive in and just try it. And now I learned this and it's something I can integrate into potentially my next piece. I'll also note as well, this is something that, you know, happens in pretty much 90% of the paintings I work on. I'll get to this point where I'm just like, either stuck or annoyed or I need to call it a day with the painting. And um, I just want to recommend to you guys as well that, you know, you should look out for that feeling because nine times out of 10, if you step away from a painting, either for a couple hours or for the whole day and come back to it the next day, it's going to end up turning out so much better. So that's what I did. I, I, I basically did two painting sessions for this. And um, today when I finished it up, I felt much, much more confident. I, you know, obviously had a fresh set of eyes to kind of look at it and really analyze like what I could do to change it up and make it feel like it was looking a little bit better and more along the lines of like what I had imagined it to be. So overall, I feel like I was pretty successful in completing a piece that was a little bit outside my comfort zone. It was fun. I got to play around with some new brushes and stuff. As I already said, there were some things that I was frustrated by and things that, you know, now looking at it, I feel like I would have changed earlier on. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And that's, I guess, the best that you can ask for, right? All right, guys, well, I hope this encourages you to do some sort of like similar study slash exercises. If you do do this particular exercise, um, feel free to post in the Discord and ping me so I can check it out. I'd be really interested to see what you guys create as well. Um, overall, this was really fun. I'm really happy to be getting back into painting videos, and I hope this helped you guys. So, yeah, guys, until next time, keep on painting and keep on crushing it. See you.